Welcome to this Universal Transmissions video. My name is Philip, and today we are going to have a deeper look at our test bench and the physics behind it. Basically, there are four different components. It's the engine driving the input shaft. It's the first torque sensor. Then there's our measurement section. After that, there's the output shaft with a second torque sensor on it. And then there's our brake with its flywheel. The key feature of our test bench is that we can measure the efficiency of the various drivetrains under realistic loads. So the drivetrain actually has to transfer all the power from the engine to the brake. The engine has 1.5 kilowatts of power and 375 newton meters of torque. And this one is resembling our driver. The electromagnetic brake generates up to 120 newton meters of a very constant torque and it's representing all our losses while riding the bike, such as wind resistance, inclines, rolling resistances, and all the other stuff that breaks us down. This is our measurement section. And this is where we are going to install our chains and our belts that we want to test. These two are the torque sensors, and this is where the magic happens. These have a very high accuracy of 0.03%, which is very precise and helps us to determine our losses in this drivetrain section. This setup makes it possible to run dynamic and very realistic measurements in the drivetrain section under loads from 25 to over 750 watts of power. A static measurement, or one without a proper load, could never achieve results that close to reality. To understand what we are actually measuring here, let's have a look at the physics behind this on the block diagram. So again, we can see the engine, the brake, the two sensors, and the measurement section. This pointer shows the power flow from the engine through the measurement section into the brake, where it's dissipated into heat, a lot of heat. As we are interested in the level of efficiency of the drivetrain, that's the efficiency factor eta, we want to find out how much power we put into it, that's p in, and how much power we get out of it, p out. And that's exactly what the sensors can tell us, thanks to this little formula. As the sensors continuously measure the torque, that's m, and the revolutions n, we know precisely which amount of power p is transferred or lost in the drivetrain. 2 times pi is a constant, by the way, and will always stay the same. To get an idea of the amount of power we need to drive our bike, let's have a look at a list. What we see here are some examples of the resistances we have to overcome while riding at a constant speed. There is the rolling resistance of our tires that are inflated to 3.5 bar in our example, there is the hub dynamo, which is currently turned off. We have no additional headwind slowing us down. And also, there is no incline ahead of us. In this example, to maintain our speed of 25 km per hour, we need about 150 watts. If we only lost 0.5 bar of pressure from the tires now, we would have to apply an additional 3 watts to keep our speed. With the dynamo turned on, we create further losses of around 4 watts. As soon as there is a light air of only 2 km per hour blowing towards us, it will consume another 19 watts of power. And the worst of them all is a tiny incline of just 0.5% that will force us to apply another 35 watts of power to keep to 25 km per hour. That sums up to over 60 watts of power just to keep the same speed as before. If we now have a look at the losses in the drivetrain, either on the chain or the belt, we can see that these losses are relatively small. We are talking about 3 watts here. So even if the chain or belt drive is worn down to 100%, it still consumes less energy than a hub dynamo. Compared to the overall losses on the bike, the amount of power we lose in the drivetrain is not that great at all. For now, I would like to talk about the differences in construction of the belt and the chain drive and what it means for the wear and tear. If we have a closer look at the chain, it consists of several joints. These joints move while the chain is running on the chain wheel. The losses we generate in a chain come from the movement and the friction inside the joints. If we have a look on the Gates carbon drive belt, we will see that it consists of endless carbon fibers that take the tension. That means we don't have friction in the joints, but only some losses in bending the material. The interesting thing is that this will not get longer over its wear. 
Here you can see that a new belt is exactly as long as a worn down one, which ran about 12,000 kilometers. That means that you never have to worry about your belt tension again once it was adjusted right. And if the frame is designed in the right way, you can also put your rear wheel back in after a puncture without having to readjust the tension again. The chain on the other side will get longer and longer over its use as it wears down in the joints. That means this chain will not fit properly into the sprocket anymore and will cause friction. These are three differently worn down chains. The new one is on top. You can easily see the differences in length. The chain in the middle ran about 5000 kilometers, the bottom one approximately 10,000. As the elongated chain has a different pitch now, it will also wear down the sprockets and further increase our losses. In this slow motion, you can actually see that the worn down chain does not intermesh properly into the teeth anymore. These losses will get worse over time if we don't oil the chain regularly as it runs dry and gets more friction in the joints. The belt wears down in a completely different way. As it keeps its length, it only wears down the sprockets, but keeps its efficiency. As you can see, the sprockets show clear signs of wear as the teeth are ground thinner compared to the new sprocket. But as the slow motion shows, the belt still intermeshes properly and therefore runs more smoothly. So, let's have a look how chains and belt drives perform on our test bench in the next video. Thanks for watching, see you soon.